Welcome, one and all. This is Peter Omey of Humanot Studios. This is Studio Synergy number 21, artist hangout with a bunch of people, some who are away at the moment. But uh, we have Jay here. Hey, Jay. How's it going? <laughs> What's that you're working on? A uh, portrait of Miss Marvel. Yeah, it looks really awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, and we have Johannes and Will with us, uh, but they're currently uh, getting set up. So uh, I'm here. Hey, hey. How's it hey, going? Welcome. Sorry about that. How's up, bro? <laughs> welcome. Welcome. <laughs> what are you up to? Oh, uh, I'm supposed to be working, but <clears throat> I've got like ten conversations going at once. <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice, that Miss Marvel. Oh, thank you. Is that all airbrush or? Uh, right now it is, yeah. I'll, I'll be going in with some pencils for some finer details in a bit. Wow. Do you mask all that off? Uh, no, this this right now is totally freehand. I will, uh, when I'm done with her, I'll back mask her just so I can do the background a little darker than it is. But that's the only masking I use, just back masking. Wow. Yeah, Jay's, Jay's a talented guy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Who hates compliments? <laughs> <laughs> He's that guy brooding in his basement. <laughs> hey, you know, Harris. Hey, guys, how's it going? Good. Good, good. So you gonna start working on something, Jim? Johannes? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and uh, screen say uh, screen share here in a minute. Um, I'd, it, it might take me a minute. Cool. Hey, Jim Wuhan's with us. Hey, Peter. Hey, you guys. How are you doing? Good. I, you don't know what I went through to get this to get Google Hangout to work on my computer. <laughs> I, know, I thought I, I thought I had it all installed, but I had to re <clears throat> reinstall everything. But uh, how's it going? Good, good. Just doing another Studio Synergy Hangout with a bunch of artists working on stuff. Is uh is that Will Terrell on? I see. That's me. Yes. <laughs> hey Will. How's it going? Like, I totally got obsessed with his videos. They're they're oh. amazing. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, my, myself as well included in that. Aw, I think so. I feel like I should be drawing something. <laughs> As a circle. <laughs> there you go. And a unibra. There. Perfect. Nice. Done. Now, it actually, it looks like Charlie Brown <laughs> on accident. <laughs> it kind of does. Hey, um, while I'm on, I'm, I'm going to utilize your brain power. Um, does anybody know how to assign? Uh, e an email address to be your prime, an existing Gmail email address to be your primary YouTube, um, I guess login. Here's my backstory, real quick. I I have Jim Luhan at gmail.com as my email. I've had that forever. However, that's not that's not the email that runs my YouTube channel. I don't know how that happened, and I can't it, when I try to assign it to be the 
the default primary it says you can't use a, a Gmail address or I get some kind of weird message like that. Oh. Uh, I wish I could help you with that one. I, I, I don't know. You might be able to uh, contact them over that. Does anybody have Surge from Google's email address? Or the other guy? Uh, the other do I have Surge from Google email? No, the guy Surge. Surge, some, I don't know, the, the guy that made created uh, Google. The oh. Two guys. Yeah, no. home. <laughs> <laughs> I like to contact uh -huh. them. Oh well. I know we're where he shot. No. <laughs> um, I'd say uh, get in touch with uh, Marshall Batora. Um, <laughs> you might have a handle on that kind of thing that you on YouTube. I'm also fascinated how you guys mount the cameras to to get your drawings. Um, man, if you see my homemade uh, camera mount, look at. In fact, I'll go get it so you can laugh at me. So good. Jay, Jay, that is in, like, are you sitting right next to that thing today, or what? Oh, is it really loud? Oh yeah, man. Oh, sorry, dude. Um, I'll just mute it when it kicks on. Sorry about that. I apologize. No, it's cool. It's just it's it's so different than than normal. Hey, uh, Jim, yeah. I was just. Uh, do you guys have like Walgreens or Eckerd's or anything by you? Yeah, we have we have Walgreens out here. They they had. Uh, I was just staring at it yesterday for like ten bucks. They've got a tripod stand that's like. I don't know, probably about four or five inches tall for for the eye for for your phone. Oh, really? That's yeah, it's got like a, it's got like a little little C clamp. I live I live right next to a Walgreens. Okay. In fact, I live in the alley behind Walgreens. Um, <laughs> look, at, this is my ghetto. Uh, <laughs> it also doubles as a cup. So wow. when I finish my day, I flip it upside down and I balance my iPad on it. And I put it on the desk, and I draw like that, and it's so, ah. it's super ghetto. And I can't move because it'll tip over in the middle of it. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go check out that. That's a good tip. I gotta ch check out that um, a little mini um, stand. That would be that's a good idea. Thank you for that tip. Yeah. Is anybody using anything like that right now? I'm. Well, I use a uh, old. Um, here I can switch cameras. Hang on. Do, 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 do. It'd be fun if you if you pulled back and you have like a supermodel holding the camera like that. Yes, I <laughs> have. Let's see. So I just have a, a, a webcam that that is sort of on on a stand that with a this is my long stem that, that oh, bends. See, that's mine is just like an old lamp, like desk lamp. And I cut the head off of it. Uh, oh. Can you see that? And then I just mount the camera into that. And the camera is a Logitech. Um, I don't know, 1080p HD 1080p. Mm, I'm sure it's nice. got a more official name to it. I don't know if I like it yet because it uh, it streams better. Like it's definitely a better streaming camera, but it's not necessarily good for. Um, what do you call it? <laughs> Oh, doing like video recording. Yeah. It, uh, kind of stutters on me. But yeah. So the I just took an old desk lamp for like twenty bucks at Office Depot, and I cut the head off of it, and I re-drilled the hole to screw my uh, my camera into it, and it's adjustable. It goes up and down. It's pretty convenient. It looks really solid too. It looks like you could survive a hurricane and still draw. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's pretty handy. Wow. That's really cool. And then Oh, I you know what? Another question. So I'm gonna just like told you, you guys are tapping into your brain power here. Um <laughs> with Google Hangouts, is it possible like Peter, right now if you wanted to show a, a video, could you actually show a video full screen, you know, like it because you're, you're controlling that the Google Hangout? 
Well, I, I tried that with uh, our mutual friend Paul when he wanted to stream his movie. <laughs> yeah, I heard um, about that. We, we, didn't, we didn't exactly figure it out. It's like we were seeing it, but then we realized it wasn't on YouTube. You know, they saw us. <laughs> you know, I, they saw you I guys. I put the link to um, YouTube. The YouTube um, video that is live comments on if anybody wants to answer a question. If anybody has a question in, in the audience. Yeah, well, I, have a question. <laughs> I want to try that. <laughs> I'm thinking of doing a, a live, well, I'm really going to think about it, but a, a, a live cartoon show, like just a, a special, like where I show some cartoons and then come back and then do whatever, Q&A or just hang out and then show another cartoon like for about an hour. But... I want to, yeah, I want to make sure it works because it, otherwise it'll be a now here's a cartoon and then it's me like this. Yeah. So you I, know, if you need somebody like if you just want to try it out and, until you can get it to work, I'll you know I'll do a private hangout or or we just do a public one until we get. It All right, to work that, sounds, that sounds great. That actually sounds very seedy. A private hangout. Hmm. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> I'll see you in the private hangout. Hey Jim, here's mine, the one that I'm using at the moment. Okay, wow, that's see that's solid. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> God, that's like a mafia torture device. Wow, that's that's for real. Wow, you guys are industrial. <laughs> Says the guy with the cup. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, if I can figure out how to broadcast video, that's it. Television has changed forever. That's right. You know. That would be awesome. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if, you know, and i got to ex, uh, explore Google Hangouts more. I wonder if there's anybody doing something like that. You know, even somebody that has like a live talk show and then they show a clip. You know, you can have a guest on remotely and then show a clip, if if it's possible. You and you and and Paul Pate um, were the first two that I heard about even tr attempting that. So when Paul <laughs> told me about that, I thought that was really That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, because I I saw the function in the Hangouts, but I never like. I think we might have played with it once or twice. Um, but nothing serious, and but yeah, it's it's an awesome idea, especially like for animators who, like you know, you have movies and you can play it and then do live Q and A, like you said, that would be awesome. Yeah, well, if I figure it out, I will. Oh, you can screen share on this. Okay, that I wonder if that counts as playing a video. Like, is that what you guys tried to do? No, let's see. Um, we tried to use like a YouTube button. Oh, I see it there. Uh, if you don't see the YouTube button on the left, yeah, you I see, see it? it. Okay. Yeah. We tried to do it through there. I don't know why. Um, I mean, if you want to, you know, tackle it. Oh, we lost Jay. Oh, yeah, uh, I'll miss you. want to tackle it through. now. Give it a shot. <laughs> no. Do it live. My God, you guys don't want to see my screen. God. <laughs> Wait, I gotta look up U.S. law real quick. Hold on. <laughs> um, <not> good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are getting a YouTube education today, but um, I, I have to just again, I have to give props to because I'm I am new to your videos, Will. Oh. Um, I discovered them about a week ago, and I thought, oh, my God, I watched one, and then I watched another, and I'm like, it's, <laughs> it's kind of not fair because you draw too well. So, <laughs> it's kind of, you know, so, but I, 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 I think you're really, really natural at it, and it's entertaining. And oh, I didn't know you from Adam, so that this yeah, is... Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah, 
so and then I now I know why you have so many followers and stuff. That's funny. <laughs> Hello, does uh the microphone work? Just trying to test it out now. Hey, Kristen. Hey, what's up? Welcome. I uh I actually didn't know that I was invited to uh the past few one of these because uh I keep on going on Google and they won't show me my messages like on my phone or anything, so I'm sorry about that, but good to be here now. Oh, no, no problem. I I get that a lot too. Like people tell me four months later, "Hey, I could I couldn't make it six months ago. Uh, <laughs> I just saw the just saw the invite." I was actually <laughs> so mad because Will, I've actually been following your videos for the past what like three years now, oh my and goodness. I saw that you were you were on like one of the calls beforehand, and I was like, "Oh, I actually uh I told uh." Like, oh, I just missed, like, I was talking to this other person. Like, I missed a call with Will Terrell, and I got so <laughs> mad. I was like, oh, no, I have to redeem myself. So I'm glad that you're here today. So I just want to say, yeah, well, no, I've, uh, your videos have helped a lot, like, through, like, not only with drawing, but just, like, different things, like, from high school experiences or, like, just trying mm -hmm. to get from being, like, an artist, like, trying out into actually, like, Forming this into a career, and I got into the Joe Kubert school recently. So you helped Did me you out with really? That. Yeah, Congratulations. yeah. I got a, I'm going in. Uh, yeah, this uh, next fall or whatnot. So. Oh wow, that's yeah. awesome. So thank you for that. I'm done. Uh, that's my little fan letter right there. Nice to meet everyone. <laughs> <today>. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I'm yeah. so glad to hear that. And I would hey, put on my uh, webcam or draw stuff too, but I'm still trying to figure out all the technology to this. Right my computer is annoying. Hey, uh, Will. Yeah. Um, I was at one time. I was gonna rob a liquor store, and I watched your videos, and I decided to become an artist instead. Oh, excellent! <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna be a homicidal maniac, but then I I heard Will Terrell's videos. I think, I think I'm, I'm probably your average demographic. <laughs> I'm going to take some of these clips and make it into an ad. You nice. saved my life today, Will Terrell. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so, Will, I know you must get a lot of the questions, uh, I mean, um, or jokes or whatever, with Will Ferrell, right? Uh, I get a few, yeah. yeah. It was more now, when, I did, when I did caricatures, like at theme parks, so they'd be like, are you Will Ferrell? <laughs> yes, I am Will Ferrell. <laughs> so now I, I know some... Middleton a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so now I know somebody named Will Terrell, Terrell, like uh, Will Ferrell, yeah. and then I have a really good friend named Ronnie Millsap. Nice. Not Lonnie Millsap. I mean, Lonnie Millsap, not Ronnie Millsap. So, <laughs> I'm going to try to get all my friends to have close names to celebrities. It's so great to meet you, Rurt Benolds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Burt Reynolds is the first one that popped in my mind. <laughs> my just, friend Hassan. He's thinking about mustaches today. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's that for that you're working on, Will? Oh, I'm just is doing it? an ink study. Frank Frazetta. I'm taking an inking class with Jeff nice. Watts, and um, it's been really helpful. It's it's just like looking at a drawing that somebody else has already done and then line for line reproducing it without like sketching it out first. It's really challenging. Right. It's a good skill to learn though, definitely. Yeah. I did one here I'll show you one I did a couple days ago. Hang on. Okay. I'm back. Yeah, here's one I did the other day. Oh, no. Can you see that? Is it all blurry? Yeah, uh, now it is. That's right. Uh, hey, so it's like nice a cardigan. <laughs> I remember that piece. Oh. So I've been doing a lot of Frazetta studies and a lot of Mike Mignola studies. Wasn't that a Mike Crude, or is it Frazetta? This is Frazetta. The original. Frazetta, yeah. 
Okay. I love I'm their affiliates. <laughs> and I've got in here, this is my my ink study book. I've got some uh, wolves, badly drawn wolves. There's another Is there a more, uh, pen or brush? Uh, I used to prefer a uh, pen, but now I'm uh, much more prefer brush. Yeah, I've been trying to go for brush lately. I uh, picked up these Escoda ones since Windsor Newton are uh, difficult to get nowadays. Yeah. But uh, Escoda, and they're also expensive, but uh, Escoda works pretty well too. Do y'all know what happened with the Windsor Newton brushes? It's something with like the hair, like in Russia, they got into this matter. They got into what? Didn't they get into like some, like they don't ship them to America, something with Russia or whatnot? Yeah, they're kind of in a trade war right now. Yeah. So the the Kalinsky sable hairs are being classified as rare and endangered, yeah. <laughs> even though they're basically rats. Yeah. They're everywhere. <laughs> Raise them on a farm somewhere. That's crazy. What do you use, Peter? Uh, Windsor Newton. <laughs> Series sevens. Series seven like number two. You use the number two. Yeah, I my my good Windsor Newton uh, has been uh, I don't know it's hidden somewhere because of my cat, so I'm I'm just using a quilt, a quilt wait, right now. Wait, your cat your cat keeps stealing your brush to draw with it or something? <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Uh, no, he he knocked it to the floor. I can't for the life of me find it, but it's around <laughs> here somewhere. Does it still have ink on it? <laughs> No, no, it's like, you know, I cleaned it, and and he was in the studio after me, and then all of a sudden it wasn't around. And <laughs> Cats are always jerks. Sometimes I forget yeah. uh, my cat's in my room, and then all of a sudden I'll just hear all my art supplies fall to the ground. I turn around, there's just these huge eyes staring back at me. Oh. <laughs> I keep telling him he's banned, but, you know, they keep... He keeps coming in, so. <laughs> Crushed my reference. I'm playing with all the buttons. I'm, so, oh, I'm on this hangout right now, by the way. Hey, um, Kevin Cross says hello. Hey, Kevin. Just he's he's on a sabbatical from social media, oh, but ironically right. he just texted me, and uh, I'm I'm including him in this, so it's messing up his sabbatical now. So he's technically <laughs> on camera Go right now. Go middle man. <laughs> but uh, this is really cool. Oh, you know what? Um, just like the guests on Johnny Carson, where they go, um, you know, he's got a previous engagement. And, uh, I'm gonna have to leave, but I want to see everybody. If everybody could type your link for your website, um, I would like to check out everybody's. I know Will, I got yours, and Peter, I got yours. But um, Kristen, no. <laughs> yeah. And Johannes, is it Johannes or Johannes? Johannes. Johannes. I would love to check out your your. Oh uh, yeah, no problem. I'm actually kind of in the works of trying to move around because I have this magazine I swallowed a fly that I'm trying to put out, so I'm trying to make a page for that. But then I have a, a main art page, but I don't really update my Facebook too much. I have more of an Instagram, but I'm still trying to get a good <laughs> name, but I'll send you whatever. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> face. I need your uh, social security and your yeah. bank pin. That's all yeah. I need. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No problem. <laughs> tell, Kevin, tell Kevin I said I need to post it on the screen. <laughs> Kevin, he says hi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm Kevin giving him, I gave him a it. shout out. I gave him a shout out in my next uh, people sketching video. Uh, did you? There awesome. you go, Jim. Can you see that? Oh, okay, yeah. All right. Are you related to Michael Vick? 
No, I yeah. don't think he is. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I he can like run that. really fast, too. <laughs> oh, you got a YouTube. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm part of the uh, 100s, like Kevin Cross. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll check that out. And, and Peter and uh, just about everybody yeah. anymore. How far are you into your 100s? Um, I am on uh, day, uh, I don't know, 10, I think, of the second time around. So How are you liking it? 110 days at this point. Um, <laughs> it's hell. <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's tough because... Um, you know, you've got family and 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 all those other responsibilities, and then you try to pull that off. Yeah, so. I just started doing that again too, but then school made it really difficult when that started up. And I got to tell you guys before I go, I got to tell you about Kevin Cross's dirty little secret. He um he actually filmed all his 100 videos on the same day. <laughs> I don't believe that. Changed shirt. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And also, he doesn't like punk rock. <laughs> really, really into salsa. Uh, it's so salsa. weird. In country. Yes. Country salsa dance, line dance. Like. <laughs> but that's that's just between us. But, um, yeah. I would I would love to. I'm gonna experiment with this hangout stuff. It's fascinating to me. I would love to to thank you for the invite. Um, if I'm free, I'll, I'd love to join you guys again. So, and I'll uh, I'll share my screen. And now I know how to do that. Uh, <clears throat> just really quick, there's a, the, somebody who commented on the YouTube page says uh, you can play full screen videos of, and other sorts of overlays through Twitch. Um, but you know that doesn't help you on YouTube. But um, you need separate software for your computer. So or, like. Right now, there's live comments on the YouTube page. Yeah, you can. Um, you could always pre-record this stuff. It is or you want to do it live though, right? Well, no, no. I mean, I mean, just play it live. It's all. It's all pre-recorded. Oh. Yeah, I think maybe maybe screen share would actually work better. Um, maybe. Like like I said, you could just mess around. You can you know contact me if you want me to help for. All right. I, there's another hangout. I think it must be for uh, some kind of uh, cartoon from the '80s thing. It's called ISIS. So they're they're inviting me. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll go. I'm gonna check them out. They seem like nice guys. So. ISIS. Huh. I think they're in the extreme sports. <laughs> from what I understand. <laughs> There we go. Now, now all of us are going to be uh, investigated heavily. <laughs> yes. If I if I say the words ISIS, bomb plot, uh, assassination, Peter, they're going to knock on your door now. I, I just ruined it for everybody. And lastly, don't forget kumquat. <laughs> now you're really really in for it. All right. They're going to be at your house, Peter, saying, "Hi, Peter. Have a seat." <laughs> I'm John. I'm John Hanson. But all right. Well, before I get anybody else arrested, uh, I just want to say thanks, guys. I I'll check this out again. This is really a lot of fun. There's there's so many buttons I want to press on the sides here too. Though I got to be careful. So yeah, but, be careful. Don't touch the red one. All right, guys. Thanks. Take it easy. Take care. <laughs> Kevin Phillips mm -hmm. says that he's uh, watching tonight. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I invited him in. I, <laughs> how long ago... Okay, Johannes, I, I just... Hey, uh, sorry, my, uh, phone, or, uh, my computer went funny. The what? My uh, oh, computer kind of malfunctioned. Sorry about that. Uh, Johannes, I just friended you on Facebook, but I guess you'd already sent me a friend request. <laughs> oh yeah, I've, I've been uh, you and I have been friends for years now. Uh, have we really? Because it said <laughs> confirm friend request. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I've got Wait, about... I, 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 I have to confirm friend request? No, I, I had to, because I went oh. to your page and it said <laughs> friend requests. And I have about 700 unconfirmed friend requests. Oh, I, 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 can, I can only imagine, dude. Your, your videos are like... You, you got you get so many hits on those things. <laughs> it's I wish I could friend everybody, but it's kind of I don't know. You I think you're maxed out at this point. Yeah, don't they have like, a limit of like five whatever thousand or something? I think less I, than that. I think I mentally maxed out, but not. <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes up to five thousand, but it's yeah, kind of like, like that. It's yeah, to the, it's to the point where like unless somebody actually messages me. Or they've got a really cool like cartoon in their icon. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, uh, I, I can't keep up. <clears throat> That's the key. Uh, yeah. Uh, I need a cartoon cartoon in my profile picture. <laughs> now we're already friends. There. Um, yeah, I I have five thousand friends on Facebook, and uh. um, anybody who who. Who tries to friend me at this point? I I give them I say, hi, thanks for the interest. Uh, you know, you could check out my fan page because I'm maxed out. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. I don't like Facebook. It's so because it, even if you, people go to your fan page, there's no chance. There's no guarantee they're gonna see anything you post anymore. Yeah, they had um they changed whatever system. It is so now that only certain people get your post, and depending yeah. if those people like it, then more people will see it. But it's yeah. it's weird. They want you to pay for yeah. people to see your post. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the guaranteed way to see what anybody's up to is to go to their stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, even on Twitter, I mean, if if. If I keep opening the Twitter feed, it doesn't mean I'll see everybody I follow. You know, it's like, well, that, that's why I keep my follows down to less than a hundred, or I guess less than two hundred, because I, I can't <laughs> keep up. Yeah. Once it gets past two hundred, I can't keep up with my feed anymore. Yeah, things are things are starting to get hard for me. <laughs> There's just so many people I'm like into watching and seeing what they're up to, but I mean, lately I'm talking, taking sort of a, a break from it all. Yeah. Um, because I, I have a lot more work coming in, and I'm sort of trying to find myself again, uh, as far as exactly what I want to do. So I don't want to. I kind of don't want to be influenced. Yeah. That's Did you lose yourself? I lost myself. Sorry, in Kansas. No. Um. <laughs> no, I, I I call a lot of people. I watch a lot of videos. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, you know, and and it sort of enters your brain after a while. I'm, yeah. Of months and months and years of doing that, and I just want to take a sort of break from all that and focus on me and exactly what I'm doing and how I want to do it and all that. Yeah. So I can. So I can perfect it better, you know. It's like I'm, I'm not doing a good enough job. I wanna, I wanna be a better me. Nice. So I'm not gonna get there if I'm watching everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You get a lot of noise in your head. My, I, I have a people sketching video that's going up tomorrow, and it's basically talking about that exact same thing. Cause I, I've been struggling with it too lately. Well, maybe I should. Maybe I should watch that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll be up tomorrow. <laughs> I just have to figure out what to call it. <laughs> I guess, uh, I don't know, being true to yourself? I don't know. What was it you just said? I'll rip you off. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I, like, I, um, I, I can totally relate. To that. Yeah, I can totally relate to that, though, being... There's so much talent out there. And I, I've been... Uh, exposed to a lot of talent here in person in California. I mean, I <laughs> right. like I'll go sketch with the guys at, at hey. Disney or, or Nickelodeon or Sony DreamWorks, or Sony Animation or DreamWorks or whatever, and they're all like incredible, hey. and I just feel like a beginner again. That's it's actually a very good thing, though. I mean, I feel like you should always feel there's still stuff to learn, no matter what point you're at. 
It is, is but I, yeah. I think I, I think I swung completely in the other direction uh, where, because you want some of that. You want to feel like you're a beginner again, like you're being challenged and learning everything new, but then there's a point where you start to lose yourself. Yeah, like, true. And I, I hit that point where I'm like, I don't know who I am anymore. I don't know what I'm good at. <laughs> and uh, then you got to step back and like what Peter's doing, kind of re get recentered and refocused and do I, you. I guess it's that yeah. whole balance of uh, who you're making your art for because, I mean, I don't think any art is truly fully personal because mm. you're still making something that other people can see as a thought or interpret in themselves and eventually art, I think, has its sneaky way even if you keep it in a desk where someone's going to find it eventually. But then you also have to remember that it's also at the end something that you're making and you have to make it at least good to you or else it's not going to be good to anyone else. So it's a very fine line to balance on. Yeah. Absolutely. Whew. So what do you want to do, Peter? Uh, well, I got, you know, a um, bunch of inking gigs now, right? Here's, which is, this is one of them. This is this short story. Um, I got my personal projects, I got, you know, I want to do just illustrations, uh, pinups, or just random art. Yeah. Um, eventually I, I like to get into painting, uh, seriously, but, um, you know, I got too much going on now to worry about that. Um, but I also want to do uh, a bunch of writing Wow, you're really all and, over the place. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm. I mean, like, my goal was always, you know, since I sort of gave up just being an anchor. Yeah. Um, my goal is to do a lot and to be able to balance it. I mean, you know, what I see is my grinch is to be able to do everything effectively. Yeah. You know, to to do writing, to do uh, inking, to do you know, kind of creating, um, which is all the jobs, uh, publishing, and uh, th throwing art on, in my store and on eBay, and you know, sort of be as much of a master of, of everything as I can. Uh, I know I'm like really far from that, but that's what gets me up. That's what gets me excited. So. It's it's the only way I could do it. <laughs> yeah. That's good. But it must have been quite a year to get you to that point. <laughs> well, it's it's you know, it's been my whole career, I mean, getting me there. Um I think, you know, I think in the very beginning of my career, um I saw inking with a, a foot in the door. Um, and envision doing, you know, writing, you know, doing my own books. Right? Yeah. Pencil and inking, coloring, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's just I fell in love with inking, and for a long while it was an effective career, not so much nowadays. So I, I, I had to force myself to shift direction and, um, you know, it's like it's taken me all this time to I'm, – I'm getting closer and closer to my overall vision of where I want to be. That's cool. That's good. Uh, so, uh, Johan, you, you said you – you did you went to uh, keyboard school? No, I did uh, correspondence. Oh, okay. How was that? Um. <laughs> well, <It was> great. <laughs> that's, really that's good. good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. Nice. It was, it was all right. It was all right. Um. It was. Um. There were videos that were shot from like. Uh, 
1990 something. Oh wow! So they're they're not current. They're you know it's there's there's some good nostalgia in it because it's you know it's actually Joe doing the stuff mm-hmm. and they send you like um, you know 11 by 17 books. It was neat, but I you know if if it, I would rather go there you know. Yeah, and yeah. you're you're going there, Kristen. Uh yeah, this fall I uh I'm in New Jersey too, so it's local. Oh, uh, nice. I'm still gonna live in housing, but uh, we got uh, the payments on that just figured out. But uh, yeah, it's only like an hour away, so I'm not going too far. No, that's nice. Um, you're so lucky. Enjoy that. Oh, New Jersey is yeah. actually a fantastic place to be a comic book artist. We have a lot of um. Actually, do you guys know? I assume most of you do the uh, secret stash, Kevin Smith, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, yeah right. I actually, I'm. Right. Yeah, I live right like less than ten minutes away from Red Bank, That's so awesome. I go there. I can, I go there pretty much every weekend. I'm actually friends with all the people who run the secret stash and whatnot. Nice. And uh, yeah, it's a great place there. We've got Asbury Park, which has a lot of cool places, and a lot of uh, little comic conventions around here. I also take a a class with this one artist, Sean Pryor, who's really cool too, and uh. Yeah, so it's just a really good place to be any type of artist, but especially cartoonist. There's a lot of stuff going on, which I'm really grateful for. Mm. Sean Pryor of uh, Action Lab? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. He probably uh, probably not. Um, what a... Uh. Yeah, but uh, he does a lot of uh, kind of anthology stuff I know he's been putting out a lot of those, but he's finally uh, putting out his first, like, full story as a publisher for that. But, uh, yeah, it's, he's really, really good. Really talented. Great guy, too. Cool. So what has uh, everyone been working on mainly? Like, what's everyone's main project? Uh... End of days, I mentioned before. Uh, where is it? Here. I got a cover I just finished. Uh, can you see that? You can see it decently. <laughs> you wait one second. I'll let eventually me. get it better. Nice. Yeah, let me. Uh, oh, yeah, that's cool. We started right now, and uh, I think we got ten days left. Um, still, most of the most of the way for the funding to go, but one way or another, we're going to get this funded. That's um, good. You, you guys are motoring through those pages too. Yeah, I've well, seen a lot of posts about it. Uh, I think we got ten pages done. I'm not sure. Um, the the penciler who also penciled this is Barry McLean. Uh, also goes by Stay Broke. He's working on six projects. This guy is a workhorse, it seems. Insanely fast and a workhorse uh, penciler, like mm. I've never seen before. Like you know, I thought Cal Fury was fast, um, and mm. you know, he he he's like on a mission to uh, you know just get a real career going and. Uh, um, he he yeah, messaged me on DeviantArt, uh, not not DeviantArt, on, on um, LinkedIn. And he's like, "Hey man, ch- check out my work." You know, he was really kind and everything was sir. And, Someone's um, phone keeps buzzing. Yes. <laughs> Whose phone is that? It's probably mine. Sorry, uh, I'm trying. Uh, I have to use my phone because my computer won't work. Uh, I have a terrible laptop. Sorry about that. That's all right. No problem. Um, so, yeah, he messaged me a, a bunch of times and uh, asked me if I could check out his work, and I was busy at the time, and I said, yes, I will, yes, I will, and uh, it was a long while after I, I eventually got around to it um, and felt so bad, and I was like, um, finally checked it out, and I was like, oh, this looks really nice, and, you know. And we just talked back and forth, and, and eventually, you know, I, I was like, we should do something together. <laughs> <laughs> Pressed about, you know, he's 
he's not only busy, but he's posting, you know, pretty much every day, like, updates on his, you know, his, the next panel of the page I'm currently working on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, he's just really good with social media, um, and has an audience, and, you know, I was just really impressed. Um, and, and we plan to uh, do a lot more and hopefully get some uh, real serious work together. That's good. So. Yeah. Oh, I've recently got my first table selling things, which is pretty cool. Where at? Forward to that. Uh, Asbury Park Punk Rock Flea Market. They have a lot of uh, like records and comics and things like that. It's pretty cool, hey. actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get a table there. You were. They heard me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wait, the is Asbury that, is... or Trenton one? Um. You know what? It might be the Trenton one. The Trenton one, one, I could not know. They run out of tables in like five minutes. Oh, really? Like, yeah. It's, uh, I know that, I think they're actually the Genesis, because I know that they have uh, the Trenton one, and then there's one in Pennsylvania, then there's one in Asbury, and I think maybe somewhere else. So uh, the Asbury one's pretty good, but the one in Trenton, I know, is kind of like the hub, so that one's probably going to be the hardest to get. I definitely could not get anything there if I tried. It was so it was so congested the last time I was there. It's yeah. Fun. It's a fun though to go to. Mm-hmm. Is that the um, Asbury Comic Convention or uh, is something no, else? No, it's another. It's a uh, more of the Asbury Punk Rock Flea Market. It's not just art. It's uh, or comics. Yeah. It's like comics, records, like crafts, like but anything kind of cool and edgy that they kind of they look for like a theme to most of their stuff, but um. Yeah, it's right. uh, it's more of a mixture of different things, but uh, yeah, the one uh, I've been to the Asbury uh, Comic Con too. I think uh, my friend's dad actually co-owned it, but they had a falling out between he co-owned it with this other guy, but they had a really big falling out, and then the other guy is starting this East Coast Comic Con, and now uh, Rob Bruce is trying to start the uh, Asbury one back up again. So I'm not sure if they're going to have another Asbury one. I think they're oh, going man. to. That would be so rad. I, I, but, hate, uh, I hate Wizard World. Yeah, they're Just trying to... That, but yeah. It's so beat around here. Hmm. I hope they get the Asbury one back up and running because I really like that one. I've only been able to go once. Yeah, I know... Uh... A lot of people, a lot of members to it, and uh, yeah, I have never been there, but okay. Sorry if you can hear me like opening doors. I'm trying to find the <laughs> phone charger. <laughs> I'm on a quest. <laughs> no problem. Um, Jay said he got booted out, uh, but he's gonna see see if I can get him back in. Yeah, that happened to me on my computer. The uh web browser crashed or something mm. where it just closed all of a sudden hangouts are very sensitive <laughs> so anybody have uh, art challenges this past week hmm. I need to start doing more art challenges or thing on the schedule um, what do you mean by art challenges? Uh, me or her? <laughs> Either one. Well, I just mean like anything that was difficult. Oh. Uh, oh, I thought you meant like I'm gonna try this challenge, but I want to draw fifty-seven yeah. <laughs> every day. <laughs> My my brush keeps breaking, or you know, <laughs> my cat stealing my brush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Peter's cat keeps stealing his brush. It's like yes, you find a corner of the house. There's just ten of them all lined up. Yeah, <laughs> it's like no, a secret you, collection. You you run, you stumble across a collection of of little cat comics that you're getting <laughs> yeah. through. 
kitten. <laughs> I told you not to use all the Bristol board. <laughs> He's more famous than I am. Damn it. For, for your, your stupid <laughs> fan oh, pick. If someone tried to uh, get, like, if someone was able to train a cat to, like, draw on command, the internet would have eaten that up. <laughs> not too late. I, I did just train my cat to uh, fetch. Um, is like a he had a he was just playing with a rubber band, so I decided to you know shoot it across the room, and now he he goes to it, picks it up in his mouth, and, and brings it to me. That's adorable. <laughs> Why aren't you a millionaire? <laughs> you should be. A millionaire. I don't know. I I, I got like animal skills. <laughs> You've got a YouTube lucky. channel right there. That's gold. That's YouTube gold. <laughs> that's YouTube gold. Forget about inking. Yeah, right. Yeah, but then that's going to be... You don't want to have the thing that you're most known for be something like that, because then that's all people are going to remember you for. It's like, oh, you're the rubber band guy with the cat. Who cares? You don't need to listen to him when you're rolling around naked in millions of dollars of cash. That true. is true. You can't argue that. <laughs> Look, I can beat myself now. Thanks, cat. Get back and to me. And if Phil Terrell guarantees that, then... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll do it. <laughs> Tomorrow will be up. <laughs> Next time I see Peter, he's like wearing a velvet pink robe or purple robe, and he's like, "Thanks for the idea, Will. Now I'm worth millions of dollars." <laughs> I'll, I'll be the next. Uh, Was it Jackson Galaxy uh, Cat Daddy? Oh yeah. <laughs> My cat's kind of insane. He keeps on running into walls. No, he he'll just start or he'll just start screaming at nothing. <laughs> like those really that loud. Sounds like normal mouths. cat behavior, actually. I don't know. Well, it's the first cat, but then I'll have people who are obsessed with cats come over and are like, "Your cat's really weird." So I don't know, but uh, he's still my cat nonetheless. Has the cat been fixed? Maybe uh, morning. yeah, no, he has. Uh, he, oh, okay. We think that, um, actually, there was one time, though, where he was a kitten. He accidentally got outside at night in the winter, <laughs> and he was, sh we found him, it was so sad, we found him all shaking outside one day, and my mom, now, whenever the cat starts acting weird, she says, oh, it must have froze the water in his brain. <laughs> mm. Yeah, nice. but, uh. I think he's just a little more active than most cats. He probably just has more of the hunting instinct. I don't know. I think that's it, but everyone claims that he's insane. Everyone claims no. that he's insane. <laughs> Every cat has that those moments, like, at least twice a day. Yeah, where they, they just start acting funny. Run, where they're like, oh, holy crap, I have to run into the other room all of a sudden. Yeah, and most likely, it's usually, like, right after they poop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, you're right. I never put that together, but that's so true. <laughs> trying to get away from it. Yeah. The, cat's like, the cat's like, oh, my God, that was a big one. I got to run. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave you with this. Goodbye. Here's my gift to you. <laughs> you feed me, I make you fart. So, um... You know, they're usually like two pounds That's lighter, so... Yeah. What were you about to say? Uh, I was going to say on that note. <laughs> um, uh, Kevin and Phillips and I uh, started a digital uh, comic art um, Facebook page this week for everybody that does digital Facebooking or digital uh, comic booking art. Um, you know, like a hangout so that we could talk shop and oh, nice. share. It's a, it's a group. Yes, it's a group. Yeah, it's not a page. It's a group. I saw it was pretty active. Yes, yes, it was surprisingly it shot up very quickly. That's awesome. Yeah. There's, there's How old are you guys? How old are you, John? Who, me? Oh, yeah. uh, I'm 37. How old are you, Kristen? I'm 18. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 38. Be... 
That would be 52 April 9th. Oh, nice. Which is not too far away. Yeah. Whenever I go on these things, I always feel like that little kid. It's like, I want to be with the adult, like, <laughs> group. I'm like that one annoying little kid. No one expects that I'm actually an idiot who doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know what my life would have been like if I'd had the internet when I was 18. They say that it's completely rewired, or well, not completely, yeah. but uh, the way that we take in information. Oh my god, yeah. The way I took in information different. was... Just, the way I took in information was being a brooding kid in the coffee shop, like, oh, I want a girlfriend. That hasn't changed. It's just instead of talking to your friend, you're talking to someone on your iPhone. Yeah. But uh, tell me if any of this, if this has happened to you guys, it's like, let's say you're uh, talking to one of your friends, and let's say it's about a movie or something, and uh, you remember, like, oh, yeah, that actor, and you're trying to remember his name. And you're like, oh, I can just look it up. But you don't even type anything in Google, but you pick up your phone and you open up Google. And before you even type anything, the answer comes into your head. It's like that, it's like somehow your brain, like that motion of taking out your phone and opening Google somehow unlocks the information that was already there, which is kind of scary. I'm not sure. I've talked to uh, other people, and they've said that they've had the same thing happen to them. So I'm not sure if that's like a generational thing, but it's one thing that I've noticed. It's like you're about to think of something, and then it's when you take out your phone that the answer comes to you, which is kind of weird. But yeah, I've noticed a few people say that they have that happen to them. Could be. Sometimes. You know, I've, I've, I've had a lot of phone, con <laughs> phone conversations where I try to think of something and not in front of a computer or whatever. Um, and then as soon as I hang up, it's like, oh, yeah, now I know the name, now I know. <laughs> it's like 4 in the morning, and you text them. <laughs> it was Burgess Meredith. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <random>. Of course. <laughs> Thanks. That's... I don't know what I'm talking about. Insert randomness here. Right. <laughs> I don't know why Burgess Meredith was the first name that popped in my head. I haven't said that name in years. You're, you're really pulling out some old I know! Names. I'm like stuck in 80s sitcom land. <laughs> oh my god. Hilarious. Um, so this uh, digital artist Facebook group, what do you guys do on there? Oh, just talk. Just sharing uh, secrets. Secrets. Mm. Yeah. No, no. It's just you know, if uh, you got any issues or whatever, um, yeah. you know, ideas, things that you've come across that that uh, are, um, you know, you're like, hey, maybe somebody would be interested in this. Huh. Um, or you can say, hey, uh, you know, um, I have got this issue, and instead of searching for hours and hours and hours on um, YouTube. To find the answer, maybe I'll just hop over here and ask my buddies what, what's up. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, um, that's uh, I'll leave the. I'm always there. so stubborn. Like I, I just kind of do it my own way, and then I'll get stuck and I just stop working. And I'm like, I should have just ta asked somebody. That would have saved a lot of time. <laughs> Or usually the ways that I find out how to do certain things, they're always long, meandering, and convoluted, and there's probably some other easier way of doing it, and I just yeah. don't see it. So, well, that's um, that's kind of how uh, Kevin and I came across because I, I did a video on uh, using the mannequins in in Manga Studio Five, mm -hmm. and he goes, you know, is there any place where we can like talk about this kind of stuff? And I was we, we kind of came to the conclusion that we didn't know of any, so we were going to do it. And that's it there. <clears throat> Still okay. contemplating whether or not I should download Manga Studio. I haven't really tested that one out yet. Yeah, you should get it. Yeah. yeah. Get, um, 4 is free, I think, isn't it? You can, it is? Yeah, oh, wait, there's, there's, there's one there's that's that. streaming now, right? Like, you can use it actually online? There's, like, a know. streaming version. I, know, I was talking to the this one that. guy about it, and apparently he says there's some streaming version now. Was but, uh, he in the back of a van with a trench coat? Uh, Ooh. no. He was actually... <laughs> yeah, I to talk about. <laughs> he was in the corner reading Watchmen, and I'm like, oh, you're reading Watchmen, and then we got into a conversation about that. And then uh, he's like, yeah, I draw too, and then... <laughs> so no, no trench coat, but... <laughs> 
I think I was wearing one <laughs> during that. There you game. go. There we go. <laughs> Trench coats are cool. They shouldn't be creepy. They're awesome. I love them. I've seen <laughs> quite a few. You can blame I've seen quite a few for creepy trench coats in my day. So yeah, I I have, I have to admit I love any long jackets. It's sad that they're creepy. <laughs> well, it's not usually the trench coat that's creepy. It's, it's usually the guy wearing it. It's the but... dude wearing it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I was that guy. Be careful. <laughs> were you were you creepy? <laughs> oh yeah. I was part He's of the still creepy. creepy. <laughs> yeah, I was I was part of the trench coat mafia. Ah. <laughs> they got a bad reputation. Oh yeah, did they ever? <laughs> Jerks. <laughs> Time to put this away. Yeah, right. Oh. So will. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a question I don't think you ever uh, addressed, and this is more about tastes, but um, what, like, movies or TV are you into? Um, I'm really enjoying Better Call Saul. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. Uh, and I liked, um, what was that series that came out last month? Um, the... Not Agents of Shield. The other was it Agent oh, uh, Agent Carter? Carter, yeah, that was really good. Did you see it? I saw the first two episodes of that. Uh, is it worth continuing to watch? Oh yeah, it got really good. It's only eight yeah. episodes. It's a limited series. Oh, was it? Yeah. Uh, it's actually over I now. Didn't even yeah, it's really good. Ah, I will check it out then. <laughs> is yeah. it me or is uh, TV really been upping their game the past five yeah. years or so? It seems like a, it as a media form has really gotten interesting. Instead of just little sitcoms or things, it's like whole movies just in small chunks that keep going. It's because it's gotten more affordable Yeah. You know, to do better TV. That nobody goes to the movies anymore. Yeah. I go to the movies. No. Oh. You're the I only feel dude, like, um, no, there's a, just like... we have an indie movie feeder that puts out some pretty interesting stuff, but I haven't really gone, seen, like, any of the new releases in a long time. I need to watch more movies, though. So none of y'all go to see movies? I mean, I watch them at my house, but I don't usually typically go out and spend, like, they're so expensive now, too. At yeah. least the ones by me, to, instead of it's like, oh, let's go see a movie, it's like, does anyone have, like, 40 bucks for two people? Crazy. <laughs> I, I can't even remember the yeah, last at I least. saw the theater. Really? Yeah. I love going to movies. It's been a couple of years. Do you have yeah, any kids? Too. I don't have kids. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, I think Thor favorite. 2 was the last movie I saw or anything. <laughs> really? That was quite a while ago. Or maybe, well, no, Cap, Cap, Captain America was after that, right? Yeah. I think the last uh, one I saw was some horror movie, the uh, Annabelle one. Was that the last one? That was a while ago. But, yeah, I mean, we have we have uh, Netflix. Yeah. That's where we see most of everything. Um, you know... Tons of stuff, of stuff on that to watch. I just watched. Uh, the I just like I like I like getting out of the house. I think <laughs> and going to a theater. The one, the one yeah. thing though that uh, it's good if you want to go see a movie by yourself or something. But the one thing that uh, I never like is that it, like let's say I'm seeing a friend or uh, someone I haven't seen in a really long time. And then they're like, it's kind of like they go up to you. It's like, hey, Kristen, I've really missed you. Let's go stare at a screen oh, for yeah, two I, I, hours and not yeah, say anything that. to each other. So it's, uh, I like seeing movies, especially. It's different if it's like a movie that you've been anticipating and really yeah. wanting to see. But if you're going for a casual, oh, let's hang out, I'd rather just oh, yeah. go to a restaurant and have a conversation or something yeah, oh, instead yeah. of, yeah. But like, uh, I definitely would miss, I mean, I, haven't, I would like to see a good movie in a theater. I haven't seen one in a long time. That I've really enjoyed. 
I saw Chappie the other day. With a, How was that? I heard it was like, eh. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it was an enjoyable watch if you don't mind massive loopholes in your story. <laughs> so it's one of those check your brain at the door kind of thing. And yeah. yeah, it was fun though. That's, that's good. Uh, was that was that based on a comic book? I mean, it reminded me a lot of Appleseed, like Boreos and uh, Dunan. Mm. They're kind of in a post-apocalyptic world, and the Briarios gets downloaded into a robot, and uh, you know that kind of thing. But it's not. I don't know if it was based on a. The design looks vaguely familiar. Oh yeah, well it's because it's that uh, Blomkamp. He's all his movies look like that. Yeah. He did Elysium. He did District Nine, and they all have that kind of robot type in them. Right on. I like his stuff. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I know that uh, that one kids movie that came out recently, Big Hero Six. Apparently, a guy from the Kubert School. It's based on his characters from something. Well, it might have been based on Big Hero 6. Yeah, it was a comic. Yeah. Um, Because it's a Marvel property. Yeah. Oh, really? I love that movie. I saw it twice already. I'll probably watch it again. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Two movies this year that I'll see are probably Avengers and Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Like, go to the theater and see them. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, very yeah. curious how the Star Wars film is going to go over. I'm sure it'll sell pretty well. <laughs> Definitely. That's, that goes without question. Yeah, even if it fails, it will make millions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> All those millionaires failing, that'd be awful. Mm. laughing the whole time. So do you think that lately, as far as people, like younger comic creators and not just trying to get into the whole business, do you feel like there's more people that go out there and say that, uh, like, oh, I want to be specifically a penciler, specifically an inker? Do you feel like there's a lot more people or, like, contemporary cartoonists, like a Daniel Klaus, like, I want to do everything? Uh, Honestly... Honestly, there's a whole generation of artists that don't know anything about mainstream comics mm. that are, are killing it in the comic industry right now. Yeah. And it's not not in the mainstream comic industry, but in the graphic novel market. Yeah, that's They're always been it. um that's always been the market that I've been more interested in. I mean, uh, yeah. not that I don't like the whole superhero thing. It's actually it's actually I kind of uh, did the reversal. Like, a lot of people, they get into superhero comics when they're a kid, and then they grow up, and they read more kind of contemporary or indie stuff, and then I kind of started and then just kind of warmed up to superhero stuff kind of recently. Yeah. But, uh... Have you read um, any of Raina Tegelmeyer stuff? She did, um... What's she most known for? Drama. Yeah, I've definitely... I've heard of Smile before. I need to read... I need to read her, but, uh... Smile has sold almost as many copies as Bone. Really? Wow. And it, I mean, in the it's been in the top of the like the number one graphic novel on the New York best time bestsellers list for like three years now. <laughs> but you go to a comic book convention and nobody's ever heard of her. <laughs> I, so she's I've like heard the, of the book. I've heard of her. She's but, like the top selling author of the of our generation. And most people in the comic industry have no idea who she is. Yeah, it's funny how much there's such like a gap because there's some people I know that uh, they're like, yeah, I've been into comics since I was four, and then I'm like, oh, have you ever read like I don't know, like Craig Thompson or something like that? And they'll just kind of look at me like I have three heads, and they don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it's been there's a a seismic shift right now in the way comics are done. Definitely. And it's definitely shifting away from doing superheroes. It's even shifting away from mainstream. Uh, it's all going to other types of comics, whether it's uh, young adult graphic novels or graphic novels. Like, you know, Alison Bechdel's um, Fun Home book, that was yeah. the New York Times 
book of the year, not not graphic novel, but book of the year two years ago. Yeah, definitely. I and tried to find that. Go on. It's a, it's a really good book, but, like, most people in the comic industry don't know who she is or what that book is or anything like that. I've been trying to get my hands on that for so long because it's supposed to be at my library, and they say that it's checked in and it's never there, so I think someone stole it, but... Yeah, I mean, I've it's heard it's probably just always checked out. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, it says, like, it's not checked out. It's, like, on the shelf, and then it's oh. never in where it should be. So I That's think someone just... probably nabbed it, but... Uh, it was a good book. I, I like yeah, it Yeah, I've heard it's really good. Um, but I, so I've been I looking... I think it's, like, anybody who, who loves sports, like baseball, knows nothing about other sports, you know? Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, I was actually talking to a Mike Chen at a Qbert school. When I had my interview, we got into a whole conversation about that, of like independent or a more, I guess, contemporary base as opposed to a superheroes. And he was even saying, which is actually kind of surprising because we look at uh, like all the students that I've talked to at Qbert school so far, which hasn't been that much. I mean, I've met a lot of them, but as far as ones that I've had like true conversations with, but they're all primarily all superhero based, which mm. actually I remember kind of had me nervous because uh, I, again, I'm more, I'm not really primarily into superheroes. I still like it, but I'm not, that's not my main thing and everyone, that's all they did. But then uh, actually the guy who did Hip Hop Family Tree was from oh, Hubert yeah. School. So then I'm like, all right, then I'm good. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I really, uh, I do want to get published by Fanographics. I think that would be my number one goal, but uh I don't know, I just really love that publishing company. But anyway, yeah, so uh, Keyboard School, it seems primarily like there's so much superhero stuff, but there is, I think, a good mix somewhere in there, which is good. Yeah. All right, and then you add into that the webcomics market. Oh, yeah, that's a whole other story. Like, the, there was a... I remember... Um, it was a Emerald City Comic Con the year before last, and there's like all these mainstream comic book artists, you know, they got their booths set up and they're all ready to make a ton of money and they've got, you know, even the best-selling artists didn't have huge lines, but then you look over and you'd see like the guy that does uh, questionable content, he's got over 300 people in line, the entire convention. Yeah. And people are like, who is that guy? I don't know who that is. <laughs> Never heard of his webcomic or comic book or whatever and and they're not just fans, they're like rabid fans. They're just like... Because there's something about having that personal connection with a creator as opposed to just reading a character, you know, reading a comic book. That I don't know. I, I'm finding that with the with the YouTube channel. Like, I'll, I'll run in... I'll be at a convention with, like, comic book friends, and they're like, uh, they... They've never heard of me, really, but then I'll have people coming up to me like, oh, my God, are you Will Terrell? I'm like, oh, this is so weird. And my friends are like, who are you? <laughs> like, I, didn't, I don't know you from anything. <laughs> it's a funny experience. Yeah. Uh, I've Go had ahead. that plenty of times. People, people walking up to me, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did I ever... I don't think uh, I was on this since I went to uh, Comic-Con, but I met David Lloyd, which was actually really funny in the way that I met him, because uh, there was it was it there was nobody by his table, which was really surprising. But uh, I was over there, and I didn't read the sign, but he I think I was holding some book, and he mentioned something about it, so I started talking to him, and then he, and we got into this whole conversation, then he stopped me halfway through, and he's like, do you know who I am? Or are, you, are you familiar with my work? I'm like, oh, it's the most popular thing you've done. He's like, I did B for Vendetta. And I saw, like, wait a second, what? And then I looked up and I saw his name. I'm Man. like, oh my god. It was really <laughs> funny, but uh, he was he was a good guy. Yeah, we got into, it was a nice conversation. Yeah. But. That's the thing about the comic book industry is it's very humbling because you can have, like, thousands of people in line to see you at a convention, but the moment you walk out that door, nobody knows who you are. <laughs> yeah. I remember that with Alex Ross. He had, like, a, a Comic-Con one year. He had, like, handlers and security guards, and people were swarming him. And then he could just 
you know, the next day after the show's over, he's just walking around town like nobody knows who he is. I think that's probably the <laughs> best fame you could ever ask for, though, because it's only when you want to be re- like, oh, I could go over here and be like, hey, it's me, and then everyone's that. But then you could also walk around the street like a normal person, like doing grocery shopping, yeah. and no one's going to bother you. So I guess it's probably the best case scenario you could wish for. Yeah. And it's humbling. Don't you well, know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I had to move to a small town now. <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't stand it in New York anymore. <laughs> Are you Peter? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I actually... Uh, the fans. The fans. Yeah, I, w- I met a... I forget Will and uh, the one... Not uh, Will to help you. Uh, the Will... I forget his last name with the R... You know him, Peter. But uh, I met him at a convention Res- recently. Rosaro? It was something like that. I'm pretty sure that's um. what it was. But uh, yeah, I met him at a convention. He's like, oh yeah, I know Peter. Is he? Is he... <laughs> now, now I'm going to wonder who he... Is it a YouTube guy? Oh, uh, wait. I'll find him in a second. It's I can't remember okay. names for the life of me. But uh, I'm friends with him on Facebook, too. <laughs> Which is more embarrassing, mm-hmm. but I can't. I'm terrible for remembering names. But it's like, you know, when people say that, oh, I, I know that person. You know, there's different levels to that. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. you don't really think, you know, like, oh, they've been best friends for years. Or, Did you, you know, they you chatted once it? on Facebook. Yeah. Right. <laughs> One time I saw him in the bathroom. I know you. So, <laughs> we're practically best friends. Yeah. <laughs> I spelled it too. Uh did you have you guys seen that skit? Or I guess it was just recent though. It was uh, Jimmy Kimmel had a lie witness news where they went to South by Southwest and interviewed people about fake bands. Oh yeah, wait. I oh, no. like what do you think of Concentrated Orange Juice? Aren't they great? Oh yeah, I love their first album. No, what's even funnier <laughs> is when uh they take they took a, a a actual guy and they would point to him and be like, hey, it's this big celebrity guy. They would get security guards and they'd walk with him. It was some psychological experiment, and then they would ask people like, are you familiar with? And they would point to him this man's work. And they'd say yes. And then it was like, let's like they would talk about like movies, and people would make up these random things just to make themselves seem like they were close to this guy who was just some average guy in a suit with a bunch of security guards around him. But it's really interesting to see how people react in that situation. I wonder how I would react. I would like to think that I'd be like, no, I don't know who that guy is. Oh, there's um, there's a lot of really cool social experiments like that. And then, uh, like, Milgrims and everything. It's crazy. Like, you're always like, oh, I'd never be that, or I'd never act that way. And then you look at the statistics. It's like 80% of the people did. It's really interesting. That's like when Jay Leno was around. He, like, you know, asked random people on the street, so who's the, who's the president now? You know, it's like, you can always get the wrong answer from people. Yeah, that's sad. What, what's the First Amendment? Or, you know... How many states? Go <laughs> on, you're quiet. Who, me? Yeah. yeah. I'm just in my own little world over here making stuff. <laughs> I'm arting. Yeah. Tell I us a story. To tell you yeah, a story. Tell us a story. A story. <laughs> uh, Wait, what happened to the guy that was doing the airbrush? He got kicked he, off. He got kicked out from the. Oh, um, was he cussing or hang out? Peter disliked. I tried to send him different links, but huh. unfortunately, uh, that happens sometimes. Yeah, Google has a lot of bugs. But hmm. yeah. he might just be dropping out the drink. Who knows? <laughs> no, no, he tried to get. <laughs> no, no, I'm, just, I'm just, just That airbrush paint fumes finally got to him. We just yeah. peeled over. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I'm sorry it was your last day on Earth. <laughs> oh. Need to try airbrush. Uh, 
I learned from so nothing, Johannes. My I took a, a <laughs> no story. No, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. There, no, you don't want any of my stories. They're bad. <laughs> so what are you working on? Uh, I am working on uh, my comic book, The Pelican. The Pelican. The Pelican. Is it about an actual pelican? Um, well, you have to read the book. There is a pelican in it. Okay. There's an actual pelican in it, but but it's actually about. Um, uh, moreover, it's about the the main character's boat, the pelican. Hmm. Which is a bit of a fantastic contraption. Huh. Is it like the invisible airplane, or? I'll let I'll, I'll just let it explode inside your head for right now because that's always the best kind of promotion, you know. Right. It's it's like when they cut away head explosions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cutaways are always good. They always make you uh, a little bit more squeamish. Mm. Um, no, the the premise is um True. <laughs> Okay. I was it. That was the premise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sold. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> uh, no, it's it's you know a post-apocalyptic um, kind of world. You know, uh, adventure on the high seas kind of thing. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So is it sort of like Mad Max meets Waterworld? Um. Yeah. Yeah. We could go with that. Awesome. If uh, I could just pick all of your brains for a second, uh, just for future reference, what would you say is the Brain biggest... Brain picking cost extra. Yes. All right. Uh, I'll see. I'll have to pay you on PayPal. Yes to that. But uh, <laughs> uh, what's the uh, like biggest mistake when you're pitching an idea to anyone? What's the worst thing you could do? Or what's the one thing that you should avoid when you're trying to sell an idea? Everything that I just oh. did. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, there's a there's a good book called Save the Cat that talks about writing pitches, writing stories and pitches. Mm. Uh, it's Save ba- Save the Cat by Blake Snyder, and one of the things he talks about is the importance of like keeping it short. Like if you can do a log line that's in two sentences that sort of sums up the story, but it also has a little sense of irony to it. Mm. So it makes the reader makes the idea explode in the reader's mind. It sort of unfolds like a like it blooms. They can see it coming. Like um, one of my previous stories I worked on was a book called Bethy Gloom. Yeah, I think I it, remember you talking about that in your sketchbook videos. Yeah, and the pitch for it was uh, it's about a little goth girl that turns into a fairy princess. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and so you can just that. There's a little yeah, bit irony. Perfect. There's a little bit irony to it, uh, but it it sort of rolls off really quickly, and you can kind of see the story. The reader can already see it before they even know what it looks like. So they project kind of their own interest into it. Yeah, that kind of and thing. Yeah. So it's they virtually want to turn the page and see the next thing. <clears throat> so keep it short. Keep it simple. Keep we put a little bit of ironic twist in there. And uh, that's that's basically it. You don't want to make it too complicated. That's good. I've heard a lot of bad pitches in my day. <laughs> which one, if you don't mind me asking, which one's the worst? Usually the worst ones are the one that involves somebody pulling out a shoebox full of notes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh I've got this great story. I've been It's based oh, on a role-playing sad... character that I've had oh. for the last 20 years. The sad part is those are usually the people who are most excited. <laughs> They are, yeah. <laughs> and they usually want you to draw that story. Oh, yeah, no, I've met, uh, there's a bunch of people in uh, high school who will come up to me in the hallway and like, hey, you're that girl that draws all those things, right? Who like, mm-hmm. wants to be a comic book artist? It's like, yeah, I was like LARPing with my friends and we came up with this great story we want. And it's like, you'll be honored to know that we chose you to draw it. And they're like, um, <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. I'll ask like there'll be a, or I have filmmaker friends, and they're like, "Congratulations, we've chosen yeah. you to work on our indie film that no one will see, and you and won't get paid say, for it." They say uh, it'll be great exposure, and you're like, "Well, that's good, but people die <laughs> of exposure." Yeah. <laughs> 
So I'd say I say if, if you're starting <laughs> out, um, the first thing I'd start with is just tell really short bad stories. Yeah. Like practice just telling the stories and getting them out there, because uh, you'll learn more from fin- doing a like a ten page short story beginning, middle, and end that's you know not great. Yeah. You'll learn more from finishing that than you will from writing some big long epic story that. You know, you'll start on once you're ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been so, wanting like, to do a anthology work if I can, like a anthologies of stories yeah. that they have. Yeah. 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 The first real thing I I mean, I got into writing in college. You know, I I, I guess I wrote things before that, but. Um, I just jumped in and decided I wanted to write a novel, and <laughs> I kept re- rewriting and adding to the first three chapters until that itself was book length. Yeah. Uh, but then I decided, look, it's it's not really working out. <laughs> yep. i got to break up with you. I, I just can't do this anymore. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's me. It's not you. It's like when you're, when you're laying yeah. out a page for a comic book, and you know you don't start with a thumbnail. <laughs> you just keep adding to it. Right. And even if the like you even if you realize that this is a terrible page, you don't want to let it go because you've already spent twenty or forty hours on it. Yeah. You know, instead of just instead of just doing a five minute thumbnail and realizing that that was bad, uh, you spent all this time getting invested, <laughs> and falling in love with a really bad page. Little well, stories are the same way. Oh, one just, thing. Uh... Sorry. <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh, one piece of advice that uh, I've gotten that I think has been really helpful so far is that you're never allowed to fall in love with something till it's done, and uh, that's definitely something that's resonated to a degree because there's so many people where they'll fall in love with this one panel on the page, oh, yeah. and then the rest of the page falls to the wayside, and they either get really upset or it was because they fell in love with that one panel that they really neglected and pay attention to the rest or then again it also a lot of people they get really really defensive because if someone says that they don't like that certain panel they're like no you should cut that one out then they get like no but it's like the one that I really loved and then you get really upset and it hurts so that's one thing that I've learned Yep. to never fall in love with something until it's finally out there the hard part is you when you're first starting out it takes so much effort and energy to like just finish anything. Yeah. That's why you fall in love with it. You yeah. really have to do it enough that you're comfortable with doing it really badly. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, you know it's gonna, it's gotta really suck for a while before you, it's gonna look good. Yeah. But if you haven't done it enough, you know that's why usually when somebody's starting out, I recommend they fill up an entire sketchbook in a month rather than trying to do really good drawings. Because mm. they'll learn more from just doing a a whole sketchbook in a month, filling up bad drawings, than they will from trying to do one really good drawing. Yeah. It, right. But it, it's hard to convince somebody of that. It's sort of, they, they kind of have to stumble on it and discover it themselves. But, yeah. It's like you think you understand what they're saying, and then it's not till you're, oh, wait, no, that yeah. was it. <laughs> I'd say that, that I'd say that, like, 90% of the emails I get from people that want me to look at their their like sketchbooks or their portfolios. Um, there's nothing I can say about the drawings that they sent me. It's more like uh, they haven't drawn enough to answer their own questions yet. Yeah. So like, no matter what I tell them, it won't help them. It, it where if <clears throat> if they just drew enough in a short amount of time, they would answer their own questions. Yeah, I feel like a lot of problems that, and me being guilty of that, is when I first started in, like, middle school, I had this problem with hoarding reference material, Mm -hmm. where it would just sit there, but you would somehow, there'd be some, like, little piece of your brain that's convinced, like, if I buy this book and then just kind of (laughs) stare at it, maybe I'll suck some power out of it, and I'll somehow I still do that. Yeah. I, I still, like, admitted, admittedly, I uh, have a collection of, I kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of a sucker when it comes to uh, really good art books and uh, 
materials and things. Oh, that's another big thing that actually really hurts your wallet too is when you're convinced starting out like I have to get all the fancy supplies so it looks better and it never never does. It looks worse even. I mean but... I, I still run into like like I'll have friends who are like, Hey, I'm trying this new program, it's really great and I'm like, Okay and it's like fifty bucks or thirty bucks. Yeah. I'm like I guess thirty bucks, not that big a deal. And I'd buy it and I won't I only use it like twice or three times yeah. or something. Or like an app like, hey, this this app has 3D models that you can pose your characters with. It's fantastic, and it's like three bucks, and I buy it and I use it once. <laughs> I'm like, well, that was that was a waste. Yeah, it's the same thing, you know. I'm still not hoarding references as bad as I did when I was 19, but it's still kind of the same thing. There's no shortcut for doing work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yes, do the work. Mm-hmm. Learn by doing. Do work, son. Do work, man. <laughs> no the mind. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I think that a, a lot of the reasons, too, why <clears throat> some people don't, uh, or there's so many people that uh, don't really get to where they want to be is that they don't really anticipate how much work it actually is especially in the art field, because a lot of people think that, like, oh, it's impossible to get a job in one. I think nowadays it's probably more possible than ever. It's just that it's a lot of hard work and a lot of skills that you didn't think you needed to be an artist. Like, a lot of people think you just have to draw well when it's a lot of uh, dealing with people. Because it's kind of a, a catch-22, because everyone's like, art's such a personal thing, but you really do need to be really good with people, I think, to make it. I'm not sure. So what do, you think it, what do you think it takes to be a successful artist? To be a successful artist, I think that um, you have to just make work that really resonates with people. Because, uh, and I mean, hopefully that it sound, doesn't sound cheesy at all. But uh, I definitely think that uh, it, it, you definitely do have to have a large enough audience where your work has a general consensus to what like most people feel about it, I think. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, I think that to be a truly successful artist, you just have to make something that resonates with people where they don't forget about it and it stays in their head long enough where they can, oh yeah, and that reminds like that. Like you ever have, um, and I don't know, maybe that's just my personal what I want to be, but like you ever have those movies that they never, like you see them when you're 10, but they never really leave you and you'll just be in the middle of your day and they kind of come to your brain yeah. for no reason. Like I wish that I could make something like that, that it never really kind of leaves you or there's always something that you get out of it. I think that's truly success. But success, again, is such a hard question to answer what it truly is. Now, do you think that those people that were making those movies knew that that was the type of movie they were making when they did it? That's a good question. I mean... uh, Do you think they were thinking, Kristen's going to be thinking about this. I know she's only going to see it when she's 10. (laughs) But 10 years from now... What do you think their mindset was when they created I think, those um, I think a lot of people, even if they want to, uh, like, that's usually a back thing, like, you'd always want it to resonate with people, but I don't think that uh, the best work really happens where you, you can't really do that intentionally. Like, you can hope it happens, but I think the best work, it comes from a central idea or something. More actually, usually a central question that people have. What do you mean? Like, why, does, like, uh, why do people do X, Y, Z? Or, like, why does this happen? And then you just take that question and you kind of pose it in a certain way with characters and a story. And But if I think that... I think the best work, or at least the works that I personally enjoy, are ones that really have the central backing question that it's answered. Like, not even answering, but at least just posing So what, what is a story that sticks in your mind like that? There's actually a... One movie that I saw and then I'm actually re-watching re- re- uh, is uh, We Need to Talk About Kevin. Have any of you seen that movie? No, I haven't. Basically, it's actually pretty dark and uh, it's not really a feel-good film, but it's um, about this kid and uh, who basically, it's on a very serious, somber topic, but he uh, he does like attack a school, he shoots at like, his school. And, uh, but the whole thing is the central question that it asks is, like, was he born psychotic or a psychopath 
or uh, was it his mother's negligence during the early days of his childhood or the way that she raised him that actually got him to be that way. And uh, it's it's actually a really, really well done film because, uh, and I'm not, usually you can figure out in the beginning, I'm not really spoiling anything, but it's basically told that uh, the mother goes sees flashbacks, so you see the aftermath and everyone kind of blames her and she's kind of like this leper, but you're kind of piecing together what happens and it's kind of told in this non-linear format. But um, yeah, there's one central question that it kind of asks throughout the whole film, but um, it's told in a way with characters and you basically see this kid grow up and you know from when he is a kid, because like when he's a baby, he never stops screaming and when he's a little kid, he like he doesn't talk for a very long time. And like the mom always has a feeling that something's there but then the dad's like, no, he's fine, and it just, like, goes that whole sort of thing. And there's a lot more to it than that, but it's told in a really, really brilliant way. And uh, I think that it really poses a good outline for a story that poses a central question, tells so a story. You, what with, do you think it was that you got out of the story? Uh, definitely a lot of questions about the uh, a lot of psychological questions it's very much based in that like just how we kind of act as people whether or not people are born that way if it's like a nature nurture sort of thing but um the one thing that i got out of that it always stuck with me that's very interesting is again just a lot of the times just different people that you meet that kind of like act that certain way or kind of have that vibe or just in general i guess again the whole like nature nurture thing you never really know but yeah, it was a very good film, and I think uh, another thing that I really liked about it too was just the way that it was made, is I think uh, one of the things that really stuck out to me about that, because uh, just the way that the story was formatted, I think it was really well done. Hmm. But yeah, we're writing a paper about it in school, which is pretty cool. Hmm. Cool. How about yeah, you? Yeah, I think, I, I think um, like... The, the essential story has to come from your heart to a certain degree. Um, whether it's like an individual who, who writes the story or, or even a group effort. Um, it, has, it has to mean something bigger than itself. Um, but I think also that the execution of it has to be no, it has to be, but, like, um, it can be more professional with certain people than other people, mm -hmm. you know, like, they're, they're not necessarily that you have to be, like, there are a lot of times, like, for instance, a lot of times there's first, uh, first time directors who hit yeah. it out of the park, mm -hmm. you know, um, a lot of times it's, you know, directors have been around a long time and, and, and clue into that certain story that drive, drives them and, and they make a film that's, like, phenomenal. Um, and it's true in comics and other media and formats. Um, I, I think I'm, uh, like, I'm taking a... I've been taking a lot of classes lately. Uh, like I'm taking this inking class with Jeff Watts, and it's been really challenging because it's forced me to like realize that I thought I had it right, like I thought I knew how to ink, but now I'm realizing that there's like a whole other level, and a whole lo like the main thing I'm realizing is that I've never been patient enough with my inking. Like I just kind of rush through it, and that's why I don't get. Oh, that's all something I definitely struggle with. Yeah, so it's been, they really forced me to slow down and um, take my time with it, and it's it's been good. Uh, but I, I also took a, a character design class with uh, Steve Silver, Steven Silver, and, um, like, people really like my people sketching, like those, the cafe sketches I do of people I see wherever. Mm -hmm. um, and, but there's, for me... I don't know exactly why they like it, and um, I'm just kind of doing what I do and you know entertaining myself. Can, but can I chime in on that? Sure. I, I think it's because you resonate, like you get down to the the heart of just like uh, being 
uh, a person, you know, because you, you wind up sitting there it, during the videos analyzing, you know, um, what the person might have been going through. Like, you, you're going through, you're, you're creating a world for them inside of your head, and it's, it's, very, it's a very kind world. Yeah, that's one thing that I've noticed a lot about your videos, too. It's not just how to make or how to draw. It's basically why people are doing what they're doing, and it's kind of a very universal thing. I think and anyone who's doing any kind of art for it usually goes through what you're talking about. That's cool. Yeah, I well, agree with that. I, well, with the, with the actual designs of the characters, what I'm finding from taking Steven, Steven Silver's class is that there's a science behind it. So, like, I, I feel like I can do good drawings from instincts, like natural talent from what I've developed over years and years. But now I'm sort of discovering that there's also a science behind it to do it on purpose. Uh, like how to make more interesting drawings, how to design them, um, how to balance them with other characters and that kind of thing. And then I'm also taking, right now I'm taking a... Uh, intro to story development class with one of the guys that worked on like How to Train Your Dragons and Kung Fu Panda and he is a fantastic storyteller and it's the same thing I'm realizing that there's a science behind it so you're talking about there that some directors when they're doing a story or some comic book writers when they're doing a story they seem to just design it better right Peter yeah um, you know, like How to Train Your Dragon, for example. Yeah. Um, that it's a dance story, and it, there's a lot in it you can latch on to. Uh, but I think you know everybody definitely gets something out of the relationship with him and the dragon. Yeah. You know, and and that could have been just like. Oh, he meets this dragon, and they're friends. You know, yeah. it could have been, you know, nothing. But yeah. the, the really, the timing. Um, I didn't curse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's 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 everything. The timing and and, and the, just the back and forth relationship between them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's playful, sometimes it's serious. Uh, uh, not, you know, they, they both don't always agree with each other. I mean, there's a real relationship there. Yeah. Yeah, I, so I'm finding from taking his class, it's uh, Louis Del Carmen is the writer, the story, the story development guy. He's really good. But um, what it comes down to is that all good stories are about two characters meeting. And right. it's usually characters that need each other, but they, um, they, they need to meet each other for some reason, but don't necessarily want to meet each other. <laughs> and yeah. that's what makes stories interesting. That's what makes them good. And... Um, so I, I like in class he makes us like actually sit down and write and pitch stories almost every single class, and it's been so hard, but it's also been really fun because I'm finally like I feel like I'm getting it. I'm learning how to write stories, um, and and it really so it sometimes from the outside it kind of looks like you can accidentally hit it out of the park, but what I'm starting to see now is that it's almost always on purpose. They've got skills behind it that they know the right way to set up a story to make it not just connect with audiences, but like meaningful to the audiences. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I can see that. I, I feel like nothing that um, has come out recently has, it, like, it's, it's clear that they've got a system and they know exactly how to work it at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think though, like as we develop as artists and, and you know even artists or writers to a certain degree, um, that the curtains a little open <laughs> more and more over time. Yeah. Um, you know, I tr I try to watch movies with you know sort of like just with a blank face almost like you know like I'm not trying to. Uh, 
see behind the curtain. Um, sometimes it's, it is a dead giveaway, though, like how yeah. stories develop uh, in front of you. It's well, hard I don't, to resist. I don't really try to dissect them so much as like they, they kind of happen to me now, especially with having kids. Where you're forced to watch like the same Disney movie over and over again, and you. you oh yeah. Well, there's a reason. Those. Um, sorry, but uh, there's actually a a reason why kids do that. I was reading some article about it before. I mean, it seems kind of obvious, but it, it pointed out it used fancy scientific terms. But uh, it was something about uh when they watch the same Disney movie over and over, they're not noticing it, but what the brain does is it will take up every cue, every like kind of nano expression or micro expression. Mm -hmm. of uh, the characters and all that and what the child is doing when they watch it over and over is that they're getting every little piece of information that they can and kind of applying it to certain things and it's kind of funny because that's the reason why it's like you'll track your child will watch a movie like religiously for weeks on end and then one day they just won't ever touch it again and then they'll they're, move yeah, on and they'll do that with working. the next one again and again and again they're, yeah, uh, they're, they're working something out yeah yeah it was pretty cool but uh Yeah, no, that's a that's a great point. Hmm. <laughs> but I think it's like uh, you know, as Dis Disney has it's put out a lot of movies, you know, a lot of anime movies. Um, you know, the era I grew up in um, was a Little Mermaid, and around that time, Hercules, Mulan, Tarzan. Um, you know, the stuff were all all around yeah. that time. Uh, I I felt like they were good. Um, but like when, when um, in the early days of Pixar, I felt that was a, a level above that, like how they constructed their stories and, and, and the timing of the movies and everything. Um, they were a lot more heartfelt, a, a lot yeah. more like uh, writer group story created, you know. Yeah. <laughs> They they pushed it to the next level. Yeah, they didn't just settle. Well, it's been a little bit of time since uh, I I listened to you. Um, but what are you what are you up to like currently? Where you're you said you're doing you're at Pixar now. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's what I got out of it. Um, <laughs> No, I'm uh, I'm actually I've been testing for like shows, trying to get on with like Nickelodeon or uh, I did a, a character design test for Warner Brothers recently for the new Bugs Bunny, uh, and it's I don't know it's just a lot of it takes a while to get on with the studio because it pays really well and they're a lot more picky about who they get. Uh, so I've been doing that and then just taking a lot of classes when I can. Cause it's I've been in like Texas. There weren't wasn't a lot of opportunities to like take classes from really good teachers. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was the one usually teaching, <laughs> mm -hmm. and so I'm trying to like soak it up as much as I can out here. It's been really cool. That's excellent, though, just to be in that, that sort of mode. <laughs> yeah. But like like I said, the my next people sketching video I'm, I talk about. Like, I've kind of reached a tipping point where <laughs> I've gone a little too far on that on that end where now I for kind of, like, feel just really insecure about being an artist again. So I need to bring it back. That's good, though. Usually you always learn the most in those kind of things, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. That's good. I realize, like, when whenever I feel bad in any sort of way, especially when it comes to mm. art, 
you know, again, I didn't curse. Um, I'm sorry, is that a that ring in here? No, that's uh, um, it's a vibrate. Uh, no, it's a microphone, and I'm sorry for that. Um, actually, it was it was a question. It says, um, "Does Will have any plans to print his people sketching books?" Yeah, you mentioned doing that on Kickstarter. Yeah, I'm still working on it. I'd buy that. Yeah, uh, awesome. <laughs> take my money. Take it. <laughs> take, take it. Take it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to add a little bit more to it because I want it to be something that's you know not just another book to put on the shelf, but something yeah. worth reading too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, the the point I was going to say was uh, just like whenever I I'm, I'm getting nervous, frustrated, obsessed, anything, you know, um, it usually means I'm just I'm almost. There, I'm almost gonna crack it. Whatever I need to crack next. Nice. Next. No. That's a. Don't be, don't be, don't be afraid. Just push on and you'll break through it. I like that. Yeah. It, that was definitely last month where I was like, I I suck at everything. I need to. <laughs> <laughs> it's not normally like me. Like I haven't been that way in about ten years. <laughs> Usually, I've, I'm at least pretty confident in what I can do. But lately, it's been like, oh my god. And I, the worst part about that is I don't feel like I should be making videos when I'm like that. Because I'm like, I don't want to be teaching if I don't know <laughs> if I'm not confident in what I'm doing. But sometimes those are the best videos. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I went through that like a month or two ago. Oh, yeah? I, yeah, I'd like to call it the uh, final graduation from my awkward, angsty phase. Like, that was the last time I'll be that way, but probably not. Uh, right, because I'm yeah. almost, I'm 38, and I just, <laughs> I'm still getting angsty. <laughs> I think it all, I think it all just comes in waves. Like, uh, one thing that I've been told by a lot of older people or adults is that you never really feel like you're like, I'm an adult now and I know exactly what I'm doing. You're always right. kind of still winging it. Right. Like, it's kind and of like that whole, like, illusion. I, I guess it's something that... I, guess I keep it's something expecting that, the certificate yeah. to come in the mail, but it hasn't. Yes, yeah, congratulations, you <laughs> figured it out. But uh, I think uh, that's actually probably, maybe it's a, a learned thing from childhood because it's like your parents always have to be like, we're the afford, we know what we're doing, because that's like what you have to believe when you're a little kid. So then you have that notion like, okay, then I guess when I'm an adult, I'll know exactly what I'm doing. And you never really do, because adults are still, even your parents are still human beings. And I guess yeah. when you're a kid, you don't really see that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just one thing you never really fully get a grasp or a handle on things. But no, you, I guess you get better at dealing with it. Yeah, you get. Uh, I guess you get it. a better. You uh, walk better in the dark or something. Yeah. If you want to say that. You just you you slow down and think about it before you panic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I like if I lived through it last year, I'll live through it this year. That kind of thing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You just care less. <laughs> you just care less. Yeah. <laughs> Good way of looking at it too. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, a lot even, of truth in that statement. That's yeah. really deep, actually. <laughs> no, even in the last year, like there are some. It was kind of a, a thing of pride because it's like something happened that, like, similar to something happened like two years ago, and I remember the way I would respond it two years ago. Like it would completely freak me out, and then this year I'm like, well, okay, like that's that's not fun, and then it just kind of that was it. So. It's kind of interesting to see, like, the problems that used to be so huge, it means pretty much nothing, which is good, but, yeah, it's funny to see that happen. Kristen, do you need to remember to, like, hold on to a lot of this stuff, like, where you're at right now, like, the, the analytical stage that you're at. It's it's actually a, a really beautiful time of life. Like, l listening Definitely. to you, I'm, like, I'm, I'm kind of, like, drawn back into that a little bit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I hope that, uh, I think, I mean, I don't want to make it seem like, oh, I'm an introspective person, but, like, uh, no, I think that's just one thing that I've always kind of had, since I hope I don't lose it, 
But I think introspection is just a really valuable thing. And I feel like everybody has it, but uh, some people just focus on it more. And especially when you're young, you focus on it a lot. But I don't think it's something that we should lose or anyone should lose. It's a very interesting thing. But yeah, definitely I would say, like, at least around my age, what I'm noticing with a lot of people is that I think this is the age, like, 18 is when you kind of realize that you still have a lot to learn, but you've learned it enough where you kind of have a general idea of how the whole social game works at this point, where it's like you're just kind of starting to understand it enough where you can make educated decisions with other people. Because I feel like before it was kind of just guesswork, or it was more actually, I feel like, again, if you want to go into something silly like relationships too, and like the romantic sense, like the whole stereotypical high school relationship even that or even friendships is so eagerly like ego driven it's all like oh like i want people to love me but you're not the one loving other people or it's like uh you're not like you want them to like you want people to make you happy but you never really like even though you would want to make other people happy that's usually not what you first think about and i feel like when you get to the 18 mark it's kind of you understand I don't know, social events a little bit better, which is kind of nice. Right. I don't know, I could be completely wrong, but that's just what yeah, you'll, Yes, yes and no. You're gonna, you're always gonna have those. It's it's of always course. gonna be, at least for me, you know, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but you're always like having those aha moments, you know. Yeah. You're doing good though. <laughs> sounds like it at least. It sounds so. like it. I I sure hope so. <laughs> Maybe no, I won't be living. I gotta say, like you know, um, you're always a pleasure to have on the show, and That's good. and you, yeah. you do come from that different perspective that you know uh, really adds to to the conversations here, and, and I appreciate That's good. You. Yeah, no, usually uh, I always, because I mean, there always is that fear in the back of your head. It's like, like especially right after one of like a podcast or like a Google Hangout will end, and you just think about what you said. It's like, I probably sounded like a complete idiot, but no, uh, that, that makes me a lot really relieved to hear, so thank you. <laughs> No, no, you, yeah. you, you sound, you're, you're, and even tonight, you sound like you've come out of your shell a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Kind of like, uh, yeah, no, I think, um, yeah, I, I think especially in the last four years, like when I was around 15 in freshman year, uh, I used to be a lot, I, I don't think I was ever really awkward, but I was a lot more reserved. And now it's gotten to the point where, I, actually, I think uh, it came from someone that says, like, well, you're a senior now, right? And they're like, yeah, it's like, well, it doesn't matter. You'll never see these people pretty much again for the most part. Mm -hmm. So you might as well go in guns blaring. And I feel like uh, once you kind of lose that caring, you're like, okay, I'm going to go in and like potentially make a fool of myself. But then you realize that people, it's weird because then people seem to respond to you more when you thought the opposite would be true. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I guess this, like, I could have been doing this this whole time. And <laughs> where would I be? But uh, I don't know. So yeah, things have been, yeah, school's been a, pretty fun. The only thing, though, is there's still some classes that I have to do work in that I really don't want to, but uh, still jumping through them hoops, but I'll get there eventually. I don't have to take a math course yeah. this year. That was the best decision I've ever taken because uh, you only need three years of math to graduate, apparently. And I'm like, I'm going to an art school and then like they really didn't care too much about math. I mean, obviously, that's not putting their art a lot of things you have to work. It's not just a lot of people have that misconception that art school is like, oh, lazy people. That's not true at all. But uh, you don't really need a lot of math credit. So I just got what I needed to graduate. And it's been the best. Like, it's been so, uh, so much easier not to worry about math. It makes me so happy. But uh, that's besides the point. But yeah. Let me mention this, because, uh, you know, I forget who or where um, I was talking with, but we were talking about, uh, you know, art schools and what, what t is missing today, and I'm not sure about Joe Kubert, um, but what you 
need to focus on, what, what kids need to focus on, and what adults need to focus on if they want a career in art is take some business courses. Mm -hmm. Oh, they have that at Qbert. Yeah. Okay. They have a awesome. year year three goes into uh, business and marketing. That, that's so valuable. And I didn't have anything like that as far as I remember. <laughs> now, from what I've heard about Qbert School, uh, I've met about a dozen people that went to the school, and only about half of them graduated. Mm. Oh, and yeah, I heard that a lot of people. It's like a, they call it a boot camp. Yeah, and yeah. Al almost all of the ones that didn't graduate said they wish they had stuck it out and graduated. All right. It's you good don't, to keep in mind. It sounds like the first couple of years are really difficult and uh, in, mm. some ways, in some ways really boring because mm. it's just a lot of redundant, repetitive stuff, and almost all the benefit you get from the school only comes in the third year, or mainly comes in the third year. That's what that, I've heard a little bit, too, that the third year has a lot of classes. Yeah, because uh, that's when you you actually get to meet people and network, and that's when you get, like, the... The fun part, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Oh, you've made it. We're, we'll start introducing you to people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you survived. <laughs> Well, I, I need to take off. I appreciate you guys having me on. Oh, it was nice so meeting you. Thanks so much for coming up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a good talk. You. You, wanna, you wanna plug anything or, or tell people your website? Or... Uh, I'll be posting a new people sketching video in the morning. That's pretty much it right now. You can go to willterrell.com to check out my work. Awesome Will having you on, sir. Yeah. It was great talking to you. Yeah. Y'all keep smiling. Yeah. <laughs> you too, buddy. Bye. Yep. See you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, let's see. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, uh, I think we've gone longer than I anticipated going. Yeah, I need to uh, actually need to get this, out of here as well. Yes, yeah, same. This was a, a, a awesome episode, <laughs> in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, very much so. Okay, so we we had Jim Luhan. Jim Luhan can be found on on YouTube and on Facebook and stuff. And and Jay Ferguson, also on YouTube. Uh, he's on Instagram and, and Facebook. Uh, AirheadsCustom.com as well. Uh, Johannes, you want to tell people about your group and where they can find you? Oh yeah, uh, you can find me. Pretty much anywhere. Check out my YouTube channel, Johannes Wick, uh, with a V, Johannes Vick. Um, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and uh, we just uh, Kevin Phillips and I just started a group, um, the Digital Comic Book Artists Facebook page or Facebook group. Um, so if you're a digital comic book artist, uh, feel free to contact me, and uh, we'll get you in there. Awesome, awesome. And uh, Kristen. Yep, uh, you can find me at Art of Krista Middleton on Facebook, and then I have a bunch of, uh, uh, so I have the one page for I Swallow to Fly that I'm trying to put out, but also I post a lot of stuff on Instagram mostly, and that's uh, at Art of Krista Mid, which you can find me there. And uh, yeah, and then there's my YouTube channel, but they're usually all under the same name, so once you find one, you'll probably be able to find the others. Thanks for having me on, though, it's been really fun. Yeah, thank you. Uh. Glad to, glad to have you on. It's been so long, and don't yeah, do that Yeah, I know. I'll, all right, yeah. <laughs> Slap on the wrist. I will not. No, but, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll try. I, again, I'm sorry. It was weird, because I went on, uh, when you sent me the link on Facebook, I checked, then I saw, like, three missed calls. <laughs> like, wait, I never got these. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll definitely <laughs> try to uh, be back, and hopefully, actually, I got a, I borrowed a fancy camera from my film class, so hopefully I'm planning on uploading some things this weekend, and actually, maybe next time I'll be on here, I'll actually be drawing instead of just running my mouth, but we shall see if I get better equipment. Okay, cool. Um, well, I'm Peter Von Valley. You, you already subscribed to my YouTube channel, right? Right? Um, this is from End of Days. Uh, this is currently on Kickstarter. And um, 10 days left, I believe. So go pledge so this can be successful and an ongoing job for me. 
Um, I do comics illustration um, everywhere. I just type in my name, find my links. Uh, this has been Stu21. Uh, become a patron of mine, Peter Pony on patreon.com. And uh, until next time, uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, like, comment, and share with your friends. Thank you. All right.